Hello, my name is Brett Burke, and I'm an attorney here at VA Disability Group. And today, we are going to discuss CEP examinations and DBQs for sinusitis, allergic rhinitis, and other ENT conditions. During this examination, the examiner should be evaluating any conditions related to the veteran's ear, nose, and throat body system. The DBQ largely considers the veteran's reported symptoms, both objective and, sub and subjective, when determining a rating for these conditions. This particular DBQ is applicable to sinusitis, various forms of rhinitis, larynx and pharynx conditions, deviated nasal septum, and anatomical loss of the nose, neoplasms of the sinus, nose, throat, larynx, or pharynx, and a condition called aphonia, which will be discussed later. As seen in the rating schedule, the available ratings for ENT conditions range from 0 to 100%, depending on the condition and the accompanying treatments and symptoms that the, that the veteran is experiencing. If we have to take a look at the DBQ under Section 1, Box 1B, this portion of the DBQ requires the examiner to indicate the appropriate diagnosis for the veteran. The box checked in this section will determine which of the re remaining portions of the DBQ the examiner needs to complete. Section 3, Part A, deals with sinusitis. If the veteran is diagnosed with a form of sinusitis, then the examiner must complete this portion. There are five variations of sinusitis that the DBQ contemplates. Maxillary, frontal, ethmoid, sphenoid, and pansinusitis. All of these conditions are evaluated the same under the rating schedule. Box A2 of the DBQ discusses the associated symptoms that the veteran is experiencing, such as headache, pain, discharge, and crusting. Boxes A3 and A4 of the DBQ deal with whether the veteran has a 12-month history of either incapacitating or non-incapacitating episodes. Per the rating schedule, an incapacitating episode is one that requires bed rest and treatment prescribed by a physician. The VA compensates for multiple types of rhinitis, allergic, non-allergic, bacterial, and granulomatous. The most common form that we deal with is allergic rhinitis, and the VA is only looking for two things, nasal obstructions and the presence of nasal polyps. Under Diagnostic Code 6522, if the veteran is experiencing either complete nasal obstruction in either passage or 50% obstruction in both passages, then a 10% rating should be awarded. If it is shown that the veteran has nasal polyps, then they should be awarded 30%. This information can be found in boxes B1 through B3 and box B5 of the DBQ. Section 3, Part C of the DBQ deals with larynx and pharynx conditions such as laryngitis, laryngeal stenosis, whether the veteran has a permanent tracheostomy, whether the veteran has a laryngectomy, vocal cord paralysis, any injuries that the veteran suffered to their pharynx, and also a condition called aphonia. If we take a look at Diagnostic Code 6519, compensable ratings are assigned at either 60 or 100%. The rating criteria contemplates the vocal range of the, of the veteran. The 60% rating is assigned that the veteran has the constant inability to speak above a whisper, and the 100% rating is assigned that the veteran is unable to communicate by speech at all. If we turn now to Section 3, Part D, this section should be completed if the veteran is diagnosed with a deviated septum that originated from a tra traumatic event such as an injury. Even though the condition is objectively diagnosed, the rating criteria is subjective in nature. Much like the criteria for allergic rhinitis, the appropriate rating is assigned based on nasal obstruction that the veteran is experiencing. Taking a look at section 3, part E, this section deals with tumors and neoplasms. This section requires the examiner to indicate whether the veteran has any tumors or neoplasms related to their respiratory condition, including those implicated in any ENT conditions the veteran may have. Similar to conditions of the other body systems with tumors and neoplasms, they are initially rated 100% during the treatment and for the subsequent six months after completing treatment. If it is determined that they are malignant, the VA is only required to evaluate the veteran for any residuals of their condition. If it is benign, then the VA is required to evaluate the condition under the appropriate respiratory analogy. There are some unique considerations found in this DBQ. One of the unique considerations found in this DBQ can be found in Section 11. This requires the VA examiner to detail any functional impacts that the veteran's ENT condition have on their ability to work. If a veteran is pursuing an individual unemployability claim, this section could very well come into play if it is determined that a functional impact exists. Again, it's important to keep in mind that evaluations are based in part on the subjective symptoms reported by the veteran. So, describe your symptoms as they are at their worst. Downplaying your symptoms to the evaluator during the CMP exam could ultimately lead to a lower rating down the road. That concludes this video. For more information, click on the links below. And remember to like and subscribe to our YouTube page for more information regarding your VA disability benefits.